There are things in our natural world that teach us about the spiritual world. The process of a seed germinating, sprouting and becoming a plant or a tree is one such natural phenomenon that reveal spiritual reality. Today on Living Strong, we discover that God's word is like miracle seed, which when sown and nurtured in our hearts, will release God's miracle, working power in our lives that can transform and change every situation. Hello and welcome to this telecast of Living Strong and on the telecast today I want to share a very important aspect of the conquest of the mind which is which has to do with renewing the mind renewing our minds you know by default all of us have a mind that uh, is not in its ideal state we have a mind that is far away from the condition in which it is supposed to be. And this is because of the environment and the upbringing and the experiences that we've gone through in life that have affected our thought patterns, that have affected our perspectives on things, that have influenced the way we see things. Um, and the Bible uses several different terms to describe the condition of the mind and I just want to share some of this, these with you. For instance, the Bible tells us that uh, as, as, as it, it, before our mind was renewed or before our mind is renewed, 
our minds are blinded. That means we are not able to perceive things uh, as they really should be, ought to be. We're un unable to perceive or understand the truth. Our minds, the Bible says, are unclean and corrupt simply because of all the wrong input that has gone in to our thinking, our uh, imaginations, uh, our meditations. We end up with a mind that is unclean and corrupt. The Bible also says that the, our mind is wane, meaning useless in many of its reasonings, in many of its um, uh, uh, thinking and ways of thinking. Our mind is carnal or very fleshly, that is carnal as opposed to being spiritual. Carnal as uh, being given to gratifying the desires of the flesh as opposed to being spiritual, which is a mind that desires to fulfill the things of the spirit. The Bible tells us that we are enemies in our mind. For instance, in, in, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says we are enemies in our mind uh, toward God because of our wicked works. Our mind is also very earthly. By default, we are so focused uh, on things of this world. We are so focused on, uh, on, on the ways and, the, and the, the things that are important on this world. So the Bible calls our mind as a, a, a mind that is earthly minded. We also have a very defiled mind, a mind that is corrupt. And so there are several different aspects of the mind the Bible talks about uh, to show us that we are far away from an ideal state, the correct way in which our mind should be operating in. So to go from where we are to where it should be, that process is called the renewing of the mind. And even as believers, as people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we were born again. We became new creation in our spirit. Our spirit was born again and, and received the life of God and uh, received the creative work of God and we were made children of God. But that did not necessarily change our mind. Our mind is still the way it always was. And so even as believers, we need to go from being earthly minded to becoming spiritually minded, from being enemies in our mind toward God to understanding the ways and the purposes of God. We need to have our minds renewed. And this whole truth is brought about, the renewing of our mind is brought about in a very important verse of scripture, probably very familiar because many sermons have been preached out of that, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he says, uh, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So telling us believers, you know, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be trapped in the mold and the pattern of this world, but be transformed. A very interesting word that's used there. It's a, it's a word, Greek word metamorpho, from which we get our English word metamorphosis. And uh, Metamorphosis is what a, a, a caterpillar goes through when it becomes a butterfly. And so Paul is saying that we can have a metamorphosis in our way of living. So we can go from living a caterpillar way of life into living a life like a butterfly. We can be transformed. We can have this metamorphosis take place in our way of living. He says, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And this will enable us, he says, to prove, to know exactly what is good, acceptable, and pleasing in the eyes of God. We will be able to understand the will of God when we renew our mind. So the renewing of our mind is very important. God has changed us in our spirit and made us brand new creatures inside us. We are born again by the spirit. Now, what does it mean to renew our minds? I think the passage in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 7 through 9, Isaiah chapter 55 verses 7 through 9, best illustrate or best give us an understanding of what it means to renew our mind. Here's what the word of God says in Isaiah 55 verses 7 through 9. The Lord says, 
let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So here's what God is saying. Look, my ways and my thoughts are immensely higher, infinitely higher and greater than your ways and your thoughts. So here's what I'm giving you an invitation to do. I'm inviting the wicked man. I'm inviting people of the world. To forsake your ways and your thoughts. Come embrace my ways and my thoughts. So that is renewing of the mind. When I let go of my ways and my thoughts and I begin to assimilate and I begin to re retrain my thinking to think in God's ways and God's thoughts because he invited me to do this, it is possible. And as I begin to transition from thinking along my ways and my thoughts and start thinking along God's ways and God's thoughts, I am go undergoing the process of renewing my mind. And in renewing my mind, what I'm doing essentially is this. Instead of doing things the way of the world, I choose to do it the way of God, God's ways. Instead of looking at things from an earthly perspective, I choose to look at things from God's perspective. Instead of choosing the thoughts of man, I choose the thoughts of God in any situation, in any circumstance. When I'm confronted with a difficult situation, instead of looking at that from the way a normal man, human being would look at it, when I choose to look at it the way God sees it, I am renewing my mind. I'm exchanging my ways and my thoughts for God's ways and God's thoughts. And if I renew my mind, the Bible says, my whole way of life will, under, will experience metamorphosis. It'll, we will experience a transformed way of life. So renew your thinking so that you can transform your living. And how do we renew our mind? We renew our mind through the Word of God, as through the Bible, as we, the, the Bible gives to us, brings to us the ways and the thoughts of God. And as, as God's Word is imprinted on our minds and we begin to train ourselves to think in alignment with the Word of God, which, is, which are the ways and the thoughts of God, what happens? Our mind begins to be renewed and we begin to see a transformation in our lifestyle, in our way of life. The Word of God is very, very powerful. It has a powerful effect on our minds as we expose our minds to it, to the Word of God. That's why reading the Word of God every day, if possible, on a regular basis, listening to the Word of God is so important. Getting that word in to your mind, for it to saturate your thinking, your reasoning, your imagination, is so important because through the word of God, you're able to embrace the ways and the thoughts of God. You're able to leave aside the ways and the thoughts of man and renew your mind. Listen to some of these scriptures here that tell us about the power of the word of God and the effect the word of God has on our minds. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible tells us that the word of God is alive and powerful and it penetrates even or pierces even to the division of soul and spirit. And it continues telling us that it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God is so powerful that it reaches down to the very deep recesses of our inner being to the very point of our spirit and soul and then it, it, 
illuminates our and discerns and examines our thoughts and intents. God's Word can reach down into the, into the depths of our soul where no psychologist, where no psychiatrist can reach. So if there are emotional problems in your life and struggles that you're having with having and no, you've not been able to get any help from any human person, listen, there is still hope. If you will expose your mind to the Word of God, this Word of God will penetrate into the deep recesses of your inner being and begin to touch you and heal you in those areas. In James chapter 1 and verse 21, James tells us, he said, you know, lay aside all filthiness and uh, overflow wickedness and receive with meekness or with humility the implanted word which is able to save your soul. So James says, you know, leave aside all the filthiness, humble yourself and let the word of God be implanted in you. Because if when it gets there, it is able to save, it is able to make whole your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions are all brought to a place of wholeness when the Word of God gets implanted within you. The Lord Jesus also said this in John chapter 15 and verse 3, John 15 verse 3, He said, Now you are clean through the Word which I have spoken to you. You are clean to the word which I have spoken to you. So the word of God penetrates into our very being. It discerns or examines and clarifies the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God saves or makes whole our mind, our will, our emotions. And the word of God cleanses and purifies us. You know, over the years, we accumulate so much of negative thinking, so much of wrong thinking thinking, so much of evil thinking, and we really need to have our minds cleansed. And the Word of God is that powerful cleansing agent that can eliminate or, and get rid of all the filth of negative thinking, of uh, evil thinking and wrong thinking out of our minds and bring our minds to a place of wholeness where it ought to be. Hi, on the program today we have uh, Dr. Meera Balraj, a consultant psychiatrist, and uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Dr. Meera. Uh, she did her initial stud medical studies at the Christian Medical College in Velo, uh, following which she uh, was trained in the practice of psychiatry at the uh, National Institute of uh, Mental Health and Neurosciences here in Bangalore, uh, following, following which she was a faculty at St. John's Medical College. Uh, subsequent to that, she spent, uh, spent time setting up uh, psychiatry services at three different uh, missions hospitals. Uh, she's also spent time with the National Health Services in UK, uh, where she was trained in the practice of uh, uh, cognitive beh behavior therapy, which she uses in her practice. So we're just uh, happy to have Dr. Mira with us on the program. Um, Dr. Mira, one of the uh, areas that we're really interested in uh, educating our audience is in becoming aware of some of the challenges that uh, we as Christians face in the, our mind, in the area of our mind, and how we, are, we could uh, overcome them. So if you could take some time just to talk about these, uh, these uh, challenges and some of the, your thoughts on overcoming them, that'll be helpful for us. Thank you, Ashish. <clears throat> I think one of the commonest uh, problems I see in my day-to-day -day practice among patients with depression is unforgiveness. Mm. Very often when we go into the psychiatric history of patients with depression, mm. we find that there's some kind of disturbed relationship and the patient may have suffered injustice or even abuse at the hands of another. This very understandably leads to feelings of anger or um, even sadness and or hurt. What happens then is that these feelings become turned to bitterness or deep-seated resentment and these can in turn lead to feelings of depression. Okay. I think the only answer here really is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And um, we see that our Lord Jesus Christ has talked about how to pray. And in the Lord's Prayer, He repeats the one sentence at the end of the prayer and re-emphasizes the need for forgiveness. Okay. I think all God's commands are written ultimately for our mental health. Right. And it is important to forgive. 
The problem comes is that many people actually have difficulty forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that this is not possible without the help of the Holy Spirit. And as one more famous poet said, Alexander Pope, to err is human, but to forgive divine. Mm. I think the second com common challenge we, um, I often see is in Christians in particular, is to doubt God's intentions for us. This can happen when we face trials and tribulations or any kind of adversity we tend to look up and blame God for our problems. Mm. And we also wonder why He can't bail us out of our problems. I think the problem here is that many of life's trials really come to us because we live in a world which is ruled by evil. I think it is important to understand that many of our trials come not just because of the evil forces in the world, but also because of our own negligence or carelessness. At this time, I think the important thing is to uh, surrender our situation to God and ask Him to take it, take it over and believe that He can bring good out of evil. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Dr. Mira. Uh, that was helpful for us and I trust it was uh, uh, something to think about for us, for our audiences. Thank you. So before we wrap up here, I want to share some, some important thoughts on why it's important to renew our mind. We need to renew our mind, first of all, to be able to love and worship God, because the Bible tells us we have to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul and mind. So in order for me to love God, I need to have a renewed mind. And as we have said already from Romans 12, that we need to renew our mind so that we can have a transformed way of life, to see metamorphosis happen in our way of life. Third reason why we need to renew our minds is so that we can understand and prove the will of God. You know, for many of us, we struggle, you know, what is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and pleasing to God? How can I know that? How can I determine that? Well, a renewed mind easily understands what is good, acceptable and perfect in the eyes of God. We need a renewed mind to discern between right and wrong, to know what's right and what's wrong. As our minds are renewed with the word of God, even our senses are trained to know what is right and wrong because of the working of God's word. We need to renew our mind so that we could have a positive self-image and see ourselves the way God sees us. You know, many of us struggle with poor self-image and low self-esteem. It's because we are, are looking at ourselves the way the world sees us. But the moment you and I begin to renew our mind, we are able to perceive ourselves the way God sees us and have a true picture of ourselves. And we need to, of course, renew our minds so that we can keep it uh, from being corrupted from the evil and the wrong thing, ways of thinking that is in the world. So I want to encourage you, those of you watching this program, get into this habit of reading the Word of God, exposing your mind to the Word of God, hearing the Word of God. Fill your mind with the Word of God because the Word of God will bring to you the ways and the thoughts of God. And as you and I begin to assimilate these things, our whole lifestyle is transformed. Remember, renew your thinking so that you can transform your living. Today's teaching is an excerpt from a free publication, The Conquest of the Mind. You can download this publication as a PDF from our church website or request a free printed copy by sending us your postal address. We invite you to visit our church website www.apcwo.org where we provide several free resources including MP3 sermons, sermon notes and free publications that you can download and use. You can also call, email or write to us to request your free printed copy of our publications. Please feel free to share your comments and prayer requests when you contact us. I trust that today's message on renewing your mind has uh, been meaningful to you. Uh, I want to encourage you to go to our church website that you see on your screen and uh, download this entire publication that's called The Conquest of the Mind. Uh, that, that covers many of the things that we've been sharing with you on these telecasts. 
and uh, you'll find it a useful resource to study the Word of God and dig into these things further. Uh, I also want to invite you to write to us, either send us an email or write to the address that's on your screen. We'd love to hear from you. And I want to thank those of you who've taken the time to write to us, uh, sending, sending us an email. We appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Do invite other friends to watch these programs. And in case you've missed any one of these episodes, you can always go to our church website and listen to these previous episodes. Or if you want to listen to them again, you can do that online at our church website. Before we close the program today, I want to take a few moments just to pray with you. It's possible that some of us, some of you watching here, uh, you've been struggling with your mind, having all kinds of battles in your mind. Sometimes we go through depression, sometimes intense moments of confusion in our minds, and there are all kinds of battles. And I want to pray with you this, uh, on the program today and just ask the Lord Jesus to touch you, to give you the grace to see your mind renewed. Let's pray together. Father, I just thank you for every person watching the telecast right now. I thank you that they took the time to hear your word and receive your word. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your grace upon each one. That the grace of God will be released on them. That will enable them to read the word, to pray, and to meditate in the word so that they can renew their minds. And Lord, I also pray for those who might be confused and going through all kinds of troubles in their minds and uh, depression and confusions of the mind and, and struggle with all kinds of evil thoughts and wrong thinking in their minds. I ask for the grace to set them free from it and see their minds renewed so that they can live life the way you want them to live. And Lord, I also speak healing in the name of Jesus to those who might be hurting might be suffering, that joints and pains will disappear, that people will receive the power of God flowing through their bodies and healing will come. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity and affliction from their bodies and I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, baptize people in the Holy Spirit. That heavenly languages flow even through their being. Let them experience the power of your spirit. And we give you thanks to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again. And remember that the best way to live is to live life the Jesus way. God bless.